in this week's episode, things are looking up as I take my new boots for a thorough field test. And then I take my photography to a whole new low. And I disclose something quite personal in the hope that it will inspire others. Welcome back to another episode. Today's episode is going to be slightly different. Uh, for two reasons. One, um, again, you can probably tell I am local. Uh, it's been raining all morning, so I didn't really want to take the chance and travel out somewhere and not be able to shoot. So I waited until the rain stopped and came out into the, the local forest. It's about a 20 minute walk now from my house. It's not the same one as, uh, as I was two videos ago. Um, but the second reason that I wanted to make this video was to talk about uh, something that came up um, when I attended the photography and video show yesterday in Birmingham. Now I was lucky enough to sit in on a talk with uh, Sean Tucker and Thomas Heaton, two great photographers on YouTube. And I'm going to say thank you Thomas for taking the time afterwards to have a, a brief chat with me and to encourage me to, to talk about this today and to be open with people about what I'm going to say. So I retired as a police officer in May of 22, nearly two years ago. And after my retirement, it was blatantly obvious that I started to struggle quite a lot. <clears throat> my wife, who has been absolutely my rock throughout all of this, has been brilliant. She really has helped me. And we've had ups and downs but this past four months has been really eye-opening for me so it became apparent that I got issues trying to process information and trying to read situations and understand people that was blatantly obvious now whilst I was in the police I was able to mask it really well but outside of the the police and the and outside of the the framework that I was given, it became increasingly difficult to interact with people. So I cut a long story short, I went for an assessment and in the beginning of last month, I got the results of that assessment and it came back that I am autistic. Now, speaking to Thomas yesterday, he said to me, no, you've got to let people know that because it will probably resonate with a lot of people. So this isn't a woe is me video. This isn't a me look, oh, you know, give me some sympathy type of thing. I'm not after that at all. I wanted to make this video just to serve as more or less inspiration to others that don't let, if you're autistic or if you think you might be, because there are people that that are struggling and that maybe not understand why. And it could be AS, which is autist, but autism spectrum. It might be that, it could be any other reasons similar to it, like ADD. But don't let it be a barrier to coming out and enjoying photography and doing photography. And, and that's what I wanna try and get across in my videos. This doing landscape photography for me now has been a challenge to come on YouTube, but I wanted to do it to push myself, but to show other people that actually you can get out there, you can do it. And it, autism doesn't have to be the barrier that it once was. I think there was probably a stigma attached to it and it no longer is. So that's really what I wanted to say about the, the autism side of things. If you see me in videos, and, and, and you probably noticed it just now, and I, and I struggle or I, I, I pause, it's not because I'm trying to f fluff things or, or make things sound really good. It's because I, I'm, tr I'm trying to process information and it, it, it sometimes can be a little bit of a struggle. But I will try when I'm doing the photography to keep things flowing as much as I can. So on with today's video. 
Now, where I am is a different, this is a different side of the woods. It's all one big, where I live, it's all one massive big woodland. Um, so this is going in the opposite direction, about a 20 minute walk from, from where I live. And whilst I've been standing here, I've been looking around and I've been thinking of the, the type of shots that I want to do today. So I want to do, the light's getting a bit dark, sorry. Um, I want to do something that is actually quite different. Um, and I want to be able to show you maybe something that um, is... I'm just going to change the shutter speed a bit, sorry. Um, yeah, I want to concentrate a bit more on texture and light and the the maybe it's things that aren't such huge big uh, landscape shots that, that in the traditional sense i want to try and get maybe more intimate shots and i've just noticed one um whilst i've been chatting which is on a, a fallen log so what we'll do is let me just spin you around and show you what uh this is the big log i was talking about right i say log it's a it's a huge tree and one of the things, uh, being a landscape photographer, you get it to be out in nature, and it's a, it's quite amazing actually. When when trees fall, you know, people say, oh, they return the nutrients to the ground. I and mean, you can see the size of this thing is absolutely enormous. And it goes all the way down there. I mean, that's where my tripod is. It gives you a sort of sense of scale of how big this thing actually is. It's it's huge, and it even still goes up there. But point I was going to show you was where it's fallen over it's still sort of part of it is still in the ground part of the root system is still in the ground and one of the roots which is this here you can see that has actually started to grow into another tree now this has obviously been here a while because if I show you the size of this it goes up like that and goes up probably a good 25 feet to form another tree and you've got things like I think that's rhododendron growing out the side of it as well but pretty amazing that something that you think oh well that's the end of it is um, still growing anyway on with the shot that I saw so in the trunk or yeah the trunk itself you've got all this moss this is what i was saying about more intimate shots and it's really really quite cool and you've got the, still the the bark so the bark has fallen off so this bit here there's there's no bark on this this is the bare wood underneath and you can see here this bit which is where the the bark has remained on it anyway this bit is the bit i wanted to show you because I think that this could actually turn out to be quite a nice shot because you've got this water, it's been raining here all morning and you've got this water gathered in the hole in the tree I think it's where a branch has broken off previously and it just looks really cool so what I'm going to do is I'll set the shot up and I'll come back to you in a minute and show you what I've got basically this shot looks amazing if i get it right this is going to be absolutely beautiful it really is so what you've got is a little amount of water right in this in this hole in the in the uh, trunk and surrounding that is some some moss and it looks like almost like an eyebrow over the top of it and this whole thing looks like a, an eye but the water is reflecting the canopy up here so you've got all these branches and the sky beyond it reflected in the water. And it's just an amazing looking shot. It really is. And I'm so pleased that I stopped here. And, and this is the thing I was saying earlier about coming out and just finding somewhere and walking through and finding these things. There's things to be said about planning shoots. And yeah, you know, know where you're going and know the type of shot that you're going to go. But actually, sometimes it's best to come out in a woods like this or, or in any location and just go for a walk 
and then just see what comes because you can end up with something like this this i can honestly say if i get it right this could be one of the best shots i've taken this year without a doubt absolutely without a doubt and i am so you can probably tell i am so excited about this it is just brilliant so what i'll do is i'm just going to take a couple of more shots and then i'll show you on the back of the camera um what i've got um so i think that what i'm gonna to have to do is just to avoid i don't think i'll get camera shake at 160 not on this lens anyway i'm on a 2470 lens but just to be on the safe side i think what i'll do is i'll bump the iso up to maybe uh, 400 iso and then that gives me a little bit more latitude with the shutter speed as well so i'm just going to change that now um and then we should hopefully he says if i yeah if i take up the uh, aperture to uh, 7.1 and we'll see where we go from that um, okay that's looking good so what I've done is I've taken a um, few shots there to try and get both sides of the image shot because what I'm going to have to do is combine two images to get um, the whole thing sharp so you'll have one image with the water and the reflection from overhead that's going to be sharp and then you're going to have the other image with the surrounding uh, tree so what I'll do is I will show you on the back of the camera what the image actually looks like so this is the shot on the back of the camera um, now as you can see I've got the if you look there I've got the the canopy overhead oops, that's just a bit. canopy overhead is sharp and the surrounding um, trunk is out of focus but then if we go to another shot um, bear with me so yes if we go to this shot you will then see that the whole lot pretty much is a focus but the the canopy has then gone out so what i'm going to do is i'll combine both of those images and if the shot turns out to be any good then i will pop it up on the screen right now So I think I said earlier on that it has been raining here all morning and when I say raining it started off as a sort of a, a drizzle and then gradually turned into a monsoon and um, I just had to walk through this sort of muddy, well, I say it's a path, it's, it's, it's really not a path, it's, um, it's probably like a swamp um, and as a result of that um, my feet and my uh, trousers have got a bit muddy, like uh, this muddy. So if you haven't guessed, the light now is starting to drop down, the sun's starting to drop and the light is really, really starting to kick off now uh, in terms of the, the colour of it. It's just this really beautiful soft light coming through now, which is just ideal for the subject that I've just found. This is going to be the shot. And as you can see, it is just gorgeous. Well, I think it's just gorgeous. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate it. So it's a silver birch tree and um, if I just pull back a little bit you'll get the general idea it just just the the way it sweeps up from the, the moss covered bottom and then it's just got all of this it's like muscle within the trunk that's the best way of describing it that's what it looks like 
and it just goes up but you've also got the beautiful texture within the trunk itself so the idea is i'm going to do a vertical shot um and get it as fairly low to the ground so we get all of that moss in but also include that gorgeous light that's around about there so what i'll do is i'll set the shot up and i'll come back to you in a minute so this is the setup for the shot now <clears throat> I could have got the tripod even lower, but actually, once I looked on the back of the camera, I was more than satisfied with what I was seeing. Um, so I decided not to try and go any lower than I have. Saying that, I can probably see another shot in this, but for this one, what I'll do is I will show you the back of the camera. So uh, if you can see there, so we've got all of that moss with some highlights on the moss just leading nicely up to the base of the trunk of the tree. So the roots have actually got covered with moss and they get highlighted, especially this on the, if you can see it here, on the left hand side, it goes right in there. So it leads your eye nicely in and then you've got this bit here which then leads up into the trunk and you start following it then all the way up and it winds, if you can see, it winds up into the trunk and then just leads you all the way through through the whole tree itself. Now, if I come in closer, you will see the textures that's just been pulled out of that trunk and the detail. And I really, really like that. Now, what I've done is I've set it up so that it's a really shallow depth of field. So it's F4 at 1 250th of a second and the ISO is at um, one, uh, one 160 as you can see so i'm going to take a couple of shots of this now and if the shot turns out to be any good then i will put it on the screen very shortly one thing i will say is that i've noticed whilst setting this shot up is that the sky in the background you can see here and on again on this side in post i'm probably going to try and darken that down a little bit because it's just just marginally taken away from that it's not overpowering the tree but at the same time i want the tree to be the, the focus so as i said if the shot turns out to be any good then i will put it up on the screen right now Well, it's got to that time. I think the um, the sun has now disappeared behind the cloud, and the uh, the light is starting to go. That said, just before I finish up for today, I found one last subject that I think really deserves to be um, to be photographed. Now I'm talking about this this dead tree behind me, and it is properly dead. Um, is just standing up by the skin of its teeth I think but if I show you um, it goes all the way up and what I'll do is I'll spin you around in a minute and show you just some of the detail close up and so I've just done a shot now around this side and it's encompassing all these little nodules that you'll see on here so I've done a few shots of this tree only because it's so interesting and the colour and the texture and everything which is what really we set out to try and achieve in this video today even right down to the roots I and mean, if you look there i photographed this earlier as well so if the shots from that tree have turned out any good i will put them on the screen now well i hope you found today's video useful and informative as always if you've liked it then hit the like button if you want to see more content then hit the subscribe button and put a comment in the comment box below I'd love to hear what you think if you'd like more information on autism 
Then I've popped the link to the National Autistic Society in the UK, the Autism Society in the United States, and the National Autism Association in the US in the description. On all three of those sites you can find some useful information and resources. And if anybody wants to talk to me about autism and photography, then please feel free to get in touch, either in the comments or via email. I'm more than happy to chat. Until next time, thanks for watching and bye bye.